Yo, yo, yo. Are we live. How you living? How you feeling? How you doing, Alex? How you living today? I'm, I'm good. How about you, Brandon? Oh. Ow. 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 He's busy working right now. So, uh, what a jackass. Yeah, really, literally. This is your job. This is, yeah, this should be a full time job, honestly, 40 hours a week, if not more. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, only me and Alex today, due to, uh, timing issues, scheduling issues, and whatnot, we have sleepers this week instead of doing the rankings. The NFC, yeah, West. we're skipping the NFC West because we're, we're delaying the NFC West because who cares about the NFC West? I care a lot about it. I don't even know what teams are in the NFC West. That's questionable. Definitely anyway. not the team that just went to the Super Bowl or anything. Yeah. I mean, no. Or not the team that just beat my team in a playoff game. Yeah. I want an asterisk next to that game, by the way. I don't know if I can get the NFL people to do that, but if there's not an asterisk next to that game, then I don't respect it. Josh McCown. No, I want an yeah, – yeah, I mean, I guess that's part of it. I want an asterisk for Jadavian Clowney, like, performing oh, that, a nosedive yeah. into Carson Wentz's head and the refs being like, no, nah, that looked legal. No repercussions. That was just – that was you're allowed. You're allowed to do that. In a league where hitting the quarterback has turned into, like, a death sentence, we got Clowney out here just diving onto people's heads. Yeah. That's okay. That's, that's neat. Seems legit. It is legit. It's definitely legit. God, it makes me angry. Anyway, uh, we're going to do top three, or we're going to do our own three personal sleepers in dynasty leagues. Like, some are dart throws, some are just we like more than their current ADPs. And, uh, yeah, people that are getting overlooked. So, without further ado, we are. Any other comments? Uh, no. 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 I don't think so. Cut to the intro. I said, baby, I am not the one to play with. Ain't the type to give up, I'm driven and motivated. I just want some recognition and some compensation. But this ain't about the money and it ain't about the fame. I got lightning in a bottle, I think I just found my perfect sound. Can you see the fire in my eyes, bitch, it's burning now. Yeah, without further ado, let's let's just start naming these players. I guess we'll go one at a time. And Alex, you can start here. All right, so I uh, decided I didn't really want to do rookies because I don't really know why, I guess. Like the, the idea of the, uh, like the idea of the sleeper being someone who's already been hanging around. So I'm going to start with someone who's uh, – I think less of a dart throw, but isn't getting a lot of attention. Uh, Boston Scott, I'm a little bit biased, being that I am an Eagles fan. But I, if if you watch any of their games over the final four weeks, and I get they weren't exactly playing like the best of teams, but like the the dude did good, and he didn't do like fake good. He did real good, and they like they re, they they realized how to get him implemented into the into the game. Like, I think Peterson really caught lightning in a bottle there with him. Yeah. Because earlier in the year, they tried to use him. Like, I remember that Patriots game? I don't I think know. it was that game. They gave him – it was one of those – I want to say it was the Patriots game. They gave him a few car- – like, they gave him some legitimate touches. Yeah, he had seven rushing attempts for 26 yards. He had seven rushing attempts against Dallas earlier in the season. He had a few against Minnesota. He didn't really do a whole lot until – uh the Giants game in week 14, but I think they caught something there. And the Eagles like to rotate their running backs. Like I, that's, that's clear to anyone who's watched the team. And they specific, I think there's a reason they didn't bring anyone in. It's Miles Sanders. And then it's Boston Scott. You think there's a reason though? Cause I mean, like the reports came out, Doug Peterson said he felt like they missed out on the uh, veteran running back market or whatever. And that's Carlos Hyde. That's the only veteran running back that really got signed. So, I mean, I feel like they were still planning on bringing a veteran in until Carlos I think they were looking at it, but I also, I think they might just go internal with, I, like, maybe that Hollyfield guy makes it. I would imagine Clement Clement will make it. That other guy. Uh, Warren, the undrafted free agent, I think he might have a shot. I, don't know, I'd probably... I think what Scott is that, like, not so much the rushing game, but the passing game. Like, they got him involved right. in the passing game at the end of the season. 
weeks one through 13, he had one receiving target. One. And then week 14, six targets for six receptions, 69 yards. Week 15, seven for seven, six for six, week 16. Four catches on six targets, week 17. Like, I don't – you remember the screen games they got involved with him? Like, yeah, the man is very effective in the passing game. I think they will keep him around for that. People calling him, like, the next Darren Sproles, but not that. Not I, uh, Yeah, I mean, I don't think he's necessarily – he's not – no, I shouldn't. He's not Darren Sproles. However, I think he can be a useful asset to the team. The way he's being used is kind of like Darren Sproles, I guess. Is what uh, yeah, I mean, it's in that role, but, you know, he's not like Darren Sproles. Well, yeah, no. Darren Sproles was in a class of his own that way. Yeah. But I, I think for the fact that no one's really talking about him as someone that could get some run or someone that even worth having. But I think especially if you play in a PPR or half PPR league, he could be a solid, solid snatch. Yeah. Especially, uh, I don't know if we mentioned this, but this was supposed to be more so for, like, dynasty targets. I suppose we'll put that in the title. Yeah, definitely. Just strictly uh, dynasty. All right. Yeah. So, I mean, Scott could also help you this year. But yeah, I, I mean, like him. I, I like the upside of him moving person. forward. What'd you say? I probably want to take him on my five person bench. I, yeah, probably not. But, you know, if you're playing a standard, like, 12 team league, there's. A lot of receiving talent out there. He'd probably take her. Also, like, I mean, his upside is probably cap, given that like he's a very tiny man, and that even if Sanders went down, they're not just going to give him thirty touches a game. Very true. However, I feel like he can definitely be a useful guy to have on your roster throughout the season, especially for bye weeks and shit. He's a pretty good athlete too, and I mean, in college, he's not a scrub. Six round pick, yeah. not bad. Twenty five years old still. It's kind of good. Definitely good. Yeah, I, I think they stumbled into something with all the uh, getting him involved in the passing game like they did. I would expect that to continue. All right. Um, anything else from Boston, Scott? No, I'm good on that. All right, all right, all right. I will move along with Chase Edmonds from the Cardinals, okay? Now, I bounce around a couple times with this pick because I was thinking Eno Benjamin at first, and then I thought about it. Yeah. And, I mean – in college, you know, Benjamin was I – mean, he was great. Like, let's be real. Like, totals-wise and whatnot, as far as yards created, like, he didn't create his own yards much. And, obviously, the uh, offensive line Arizona the state didn't really help him that much. But I went with Chase Edmonds just because we've seen Chase Edmonds be extremely efficient. And, like, when he was used as, I guess you could say, workhorse in the one game he had last year, 31 opportunities, 35 PPR points, and running back one for that week. And he also oh, created 88 of those 150 yards just on, just by himself, which is it's pretty telling. He's, he's, he's a good running back. The system helps him. The system helps every single running back that's there. My logic is not saying Kenyon Drake is a bum. Kenyon Drake's good. I've liked him since he got drafted. But one year deal, though. Exactly. He's on a one-year deal. Chase Edmonds showed, like I said, what he could be whenever he played. And um, that system, like I said – Four wide receiver sets, they ran the most last year. That helps the running back because it kind of clears out the box, like right behind the offensive line. It's going to clear out the box, have less stacked fronts, makes it easier for the running back to get to the second level, even though that offensive line is literally not that – well, I was going to say literally shit, but, I mean, it's it's decent. It's not good. It's decent, especially among all the offensive lines in the NFL. But – Obviously, having less stacked boxes creates more opportunities and for the running back just to get to that second level. And if that running back is good enough in open field and just breaks like a linebacker tackle, like just one or two tackles is all you have to break. And you could be gone for 50 yards. Like you've seen Chase Edmonds last year in the game. I think it was against the Giants. Like they just couldn't tackle him because he got to that second level immediately and he at least broke one or two tackles and he was gone. Like that's all you really have to do with – a spread offense if you see less stacked boxes. Like, you got to find that hole and get to the second level, and if you can break a tackle or two, you're gone. Like, and that's great for fantasy, obviously. Now, um, targets-wise and catches-wise, I think Jake Edmonds obviously showed what he could do last year as well. Um, like I said, Kenyon Drake's in the one-year transition tag, which kind of shows some uncertainty, I guess, with his future with the team. And I think that – Whoever the running back is that starts for this team will succeed in fantasy 
regardless of who it is. Like, I like Jonathan Ward, too. Like, he's a pretty deep sleeper. But if I had to choose one from the backfield, just look logically, I got to choose Chase Edmonds, just seeing as he's the clear backup to Kenyon Drake. I can't respect that. But Eno, obviously, in college, I said that he was great. And I was really torn on this because I liked Eno coming into this draft. We talked about it, like, in the first video, I believe, in the uh, – dynasty or the mock draft or whatever it was but he had I think he had the most opportunities and most touches in 2018 of all running backs in college which is pretty insane because he is five foot nine 210 pounds like he's not a big husky dude but I mean obviously showed that he was durable I guess you could say because he got the most opportunities didn't really get hurt and uh yeah for that reason, that's why his kind of college numbers are pretty, pretty appealing, I guess you could say. But he's a good running back. Slid of the seventh round, which is kind of scary, and I'm kind of confused about how that happened. Yeah, but, I don't really get that either. Yeah. I think the Cardinals were lucky to snag him up in the seventh just in case, I guess you could say. I agree. They'll just bust immediately and we'll all look dumb. Who knows? I really hope not. I also hope not. All right, Alex, I guess we can dive into the uh, next sleeper you got, huh? All right, I'm going to go with uh, – th- this one is more of a sleeper because uh, most people have kind of disregarded him and probably for good reason, but I'm going to go with Jarek McKinnon. Do the injuries yeah. scare you at all? Because, I mean, you did – you were kind of off on Geist because of his knee injuries, but – I mean, yeah, the injuries are – definitely concerned the thing is i'm off on geist because geist is like someone who well all right so two things one i haven't really seen him perform in the league like consistently i know he's had a few games like he beat the shit out of the panthers for like one game the panthers whatever but you know he's pretty much been hurt his whole like his whole time in the league mckinnon was to my knowledge, rather healthy before he had the two serious knee injuries, and I'm not gonna like act like that those were, uh, you know, nothing to ah, just a couple torn ACLs. It is what it is. I'll move forward. Yeah. yeah, I mean those are those are big injuries, but I think if you're talking a guy, especially in a dynasty league, that you can snag at the very end. I want to say I drafted him in the 21st round or something like that. Yeah. Like, I, I don't remember. I just knew it was late as shit. If you look at, like, what the guy did before when he was in Minnesota, like, he was a pretty solid option as a PPR back sometimes, depending on matchup. He's, he is matchup dependent. You're not going to start him every week. But if he gets on the field, I would have to believe he's going to be the third down back for the Niners. The Niners seemingly wanted him back. I mean, they made an effort to change his contract because, obviously, they weren't going to take him at $6 million. Given that, you know, he's not even a lock to be on the field. True. I think they made an effort. They wanted him back. And I, I, I like the potential. They, they've said that he's struggled making cuts in rehab, which is concerning. But if he can get around that, yeah, you know, he, he can have a role. And you got to think like the Niners. The Niners, Shanahan really gets the best out of his running backs. They're maybe the best team in the NFL at screen passes, and I, you know, McKinnon is going to eat him up some screen passes if he can, if he's healthy. So I think he's a guy that if you're looking late rounds in the draft, that's that's a potentially sneaky add that could help you get some extra Ws that season. Especially like you said, like 21st round, his vol- I mean his. Oh yeah, you, you're talking about just literal dart throws down then. Those are just random bumps down then. Most of those guys are like, you know, like fringe draft pick. You're talking like uh, Donovan Peoples Jones type guy, like went in that area. His value could definitely like shoot up too, as you said. Like he is probably going to be the receiving back of all the running backs over there. They lost Matt Breda. Jack McKinnon's a great athlete. Obviously, the ACL tears kind of worry you a little bit, but I mean, twenty first round. His, his value can literally increase just a little bit and you can get like a second round of form. Like say he has a good game. Say he's like first week is out there, they use him and he just goes off for like 20 fantasy points. Chances, I don't know. But that would obviously shoot his value up insanely and it's definitely possible. I mean, why not take a shot on the 21st round? It's not a bad player. Not a bad player. I mean, he's 28. It's not like he's super old. Maybe yeah. he's a little fresher because, you know, he missed his last few seasons. 
possible. But I don't. He's he's one of my like dudes at the very end of drafts in, in the dynasty draft. He's one of those guys that I'm looking for. Very high upside if he doesn't. Get yeah, hurt. I mean, especially relative to like what you're paying for him, which is nothing. Yeah. Like, you got to remember the San Francisco 49ers offense, which all running backs literally are great in, honestly. Yeah, I mean, like, Shanahan will get the best out of his running backs. Like, I have no fear there. So, I see a guy that could potentially get playing time for Shanahan. I want that. I don't really have a lot of stats behind this because this guy hasn't played in two years. But, you know. That's fair. Understandable. Bam. Uh, moving forward, I guess I'll go with my second sleeper, and it's going to be Caden Smith or Jaden Smith, you know, Will Smith's son, from the Giants, the tight end. Um, okay, so Jason Garrett comes into town as a new offense coordinator, okay? There was this article I read that Jason Garrett said he wanted to take a page out of Shanahan's, the 49ers coach's playbook, and he wants to increase two tight end sets on his team, which – he said should help Saquon Barkley get going. You don't really need something to get Saquon Barkley going. He's a fucking stud. But anyway, Aiden Smith playing two tight end sets. Okay, obviously he's going to be out there. If there's two tight ends on the field, he's going to be out there. He's a great run blocker, much better than Evan Ingram. When Evan Ingram was out last year, from week 12 on, Caden Smith had 19% target share of all of the players on the Giants, which is something of note. As a tight end, it's a good, it's a good amount. Um, he was also the tight end eight in fantasy from week 12 through the end of the season. Obviously also beautiful. So week 12, he had tight end four number week 13, tight end 10 week 16, tight end five and week 17, tight end two. Okay. Obviously shows his ability receiving. He can catch it. He, he doesn't really have yak ability. Really? He's better than that at Zach Ertz, but. Better than Zach Ertz at Yak, obviously, because, I mean, Zach Ertz is just a catch and fall down kind of guy. Hayden Smith isn't really an athlete, if we're being real. Well, athletic in terms of, like, physical ability, I guess you could say. Like, he's, he's not, not like he's above not, average NFL athlete. Oh, yeah, yeah. NFL, um, yeah, exactly. But um, not much speed, not much, you know, he's not going to be like a Gronk. He's not going to just bully people over. Um so, in the red zone last year, I mean, he looked like he looked like uh, one of Dan Jones' favorite targets, honestly. And uh, yeah, I think he's flying grossly under the radar, especially with the team saying Evan Ingram. They're kind of questioned about if he can even stay healthy. So that's, I mean, that's concerning, obviously. Caden Smith's right behind him. Other than that, I think they got some uh, Levine Toilolo guy from the Falcons a few years back. Don't think he's going to have much of an impact, if at all. Sure. Uh, and yeah, I. Obviously, the receivers there with the Giants are decent with Slayton, Tate, and Shepard, but uh, very injury-riddled for Shepard, obviously. Tate is good. He's kind of aging. And uh, Darius Slayton's up and coming, so why not pick up the tight end that's going to be paired with the quarterback of the future in New York? Yeah, I don't I'm a fan of him. Dynasty format. Like you said, like if Ingram goes down, which seems to happen a lot, his value takes a serious jump. And that, to yeah. me, that's a good reason as any to have him around. Seemed impactful in the chances he got last year. I don't see why they wouldn't give him. Yeah, I mean, like, now you're talking about, like, a guy that's – he was that last year was his rookie season, right? So now you're talking about a guy going into his second year. Same kind of back hurts, too, Stanford. Yeah, tight end factory. Tight end factory. Factories everywhere. Literally. Yeah. All right. With the uh, last sleeper, I guess, for you, you can go ahead and speak your your mind. Yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Steven Sims Jr. from the Redskins. Now, this all kind of like – I remember I first started looking into him when, um, when we were having that Trey Quinn discussion. Yeah. Because I don't really think Trey Quinn is any good. He's not, nope. <laughs> and I – we were talking about him potentially being the slot receiver. Like, oh, what about that Sims guy? He took over. Well, the more I'm looking into this guy, like, I'm a fan. I agree. I, I feel like he's just kind of a victim of poor circumstances. He went to Kansas. Yeah. <laughs> like, Kansas is like an FCS school. And the season where he – the season that he had his best production, their three quarterbacks combined to throw 16 touchdowns to 22 interceptions. That's 
fucking terrible. Just poor. And people are, oh, we only had eight touchdowns. It was his max in the season. Well, no shit. <laughs> what was he going to do? He was like, I might as well have been throwing him the ball out there. Like, this man didn't get invited to the combine. He didn't get invited to, like, the East-West Bowl. Like, he's pretty much just been disregarded his entire year, his, like, entire career. He ran – he had a bad 40 time in his pro day, which probably didn't help anything. But, like, if you watch him, the, he looks like he's got 4-3 speed. Yeah. And he's very talented. I forget the name of the receivers coach that he was working with, but he was coach um, – did you see that, that, like, receivers coach that – I'm not saying this is any big deal that he happened to work with a receiving coach that also happened to coach, like, a bunch of other studs. But, like, I don't know. That guy had a lot of good things to say about him. I haven't watched a ton of film on the guy, but I've liked what I've seen. And from everything I've read from other people, they have liked what they have seen. I, I When he got on the field last year, he produced. Like, they, he only had – was six games where he had at least a 50% snap percentage, but he scored double figures in four of those. He's also used a lot. When he was on the field from week 13 on, he had yeah, they, 1.5 of his routes he was targeted, which is obviously an astronomical amount. Yeah, he had from in week 14, seven targets, then 11, then 10, then eight targets. Like Haskins seems to like throwing to him. From – what I've seen, that they haven't really used him in the deep game a lot, which I think should change given that he's a very fast, like, explosive guy. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I mean, slot receivers are generally going to have a lower depth of target. But I, th- I think he's a solid buy. I think, like, the scenario isn't fantastic given that, you know, like, the team sucks and um, – the quarterback isn't that great, and the offensive line is going to be a tire fire, and they are the Redskins. But, you know, they're dynasty sleepers, and I don't think this guy is a bad a bad option. I'm a little disappointed that I missed out on him in our dynasty draft. I agree. I tried trading for him multiple times in dynasty draft, and the guy's just not letting loose on him because he likes him, which obviously oh, is terrible. That's a shame because I, I am also currently trying to try. I'm just going to keep trying. It's the worst thing ever, honestly. But um, dating back to college, even Dwayne, Dwayne Haskins even targeted uh, Paris Campbell and just a slot receiver. In yeah, general. we talked about He uh, likes his slot receivers, and he liked Sims at the end of the year. Clearly, yeah. He got a ton of targets. He had 26% target share from week 13 on, like I said, and 29 air yards market share, 29% air yards market share, which is obviously great as well. As a slot receiver, that's even better, honestly. Yeah. A lot of those were, like, bubble screens and shit. I'm hoping they, like, start to give him some – let him run routes. I mean, 20, 29% air yards market share, is, it's pretty good. I'm not saying he didn't run routes last year. I'm not saying he did run routes last year. But 29% of the entire air yards on the Washington Redskins from week 13 on is something. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's definitely solid. I think that's also probably a product of, like, the Redskins. I think his average depth of target was, like, seven-something yards. Probably, probably. I do not remember the number. It was not very high. I'm sure he did have a huge percentage of their air yards, given that outside of Terry McLaurin, Haskins was throwing to, like, cardboard cutouts. I think the Redskins kind of have, like, a nice little – nice couple of young players kind of just to, I guess, shoot at, I guess you could say. Because, I mean, like, Dwayne Haskins isn't great. We know this. Uh, Terry McLaurin, I love that man. Steven Sims. I think he's going to be a quality quality receiver, honestly. And then the running back situation, too. I mean, if you have nothing else to talk about with Steven Sims, I'll jump into my last player. Yeah, I think I've said my piece there. Word. All right. Well, uh, the running back situation in Washington, obviously. So you have AP. How old is he now? Like 30,000 years old, something like that? Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. He's old as shit. Ah, I mean, he was decent last year, but, I mean, it's not AP that we're used to. But um, you have AP, you bring in Peyton Barber, who obviously didn't do shit last year. and is just a name, honestly. He's just a guy. Um, J.D. McKissick, playmaker. He, eh, it's kind of A to me. Not much to say about him. Yeah, I'm not really a fan of his either. Antonio Gibson's not a bad idea for a sleeper. But, I mean, he's not really a sleeper at this point just because of the fact, like, his hype is it's building. It's literally building. I compared to CMC, like, I don't think you're really going to – unless he performs like CMC, I don't think his value is really going to jump up all like that, which, uh, yeah. So, moving forward from that, we have Darius Geist that is there still. 
um, ACL, meniscus, whatever it is, you name it, his knee probably felt it. So uh, I'll ignore that. I'm not, a, I'm not against Darius Geis, I guess you could say, because I liked him coming, into col- or coming out of college. In the league, he showed in his few games that he played, he is a playmaker, a great running back, honestly, in my opinion, but the injuries kind of scare me away. But let's get to the uh, my sleeper, Bryce Love, okay? <sighs> Bryce Love, Bryce Love, Bryce Love. Alex, I don't know if you remember watching him in college his junior year, I believe it was. Yeah, I was a fan of his coming out of college. He was fairly impressive. I believe, wasn't he possibly um, up there for – I mean, he wasn't I, there, but was I'm he pretty there? sure he was, like, in the final three of the Heisman voting. Oh, he was. Okay, okay. I, I didn't remember that, but he was – I, I think he is. I think he was. He uh, – speaking of college, 5.5 yards per carry uh, – for yards created per carry, actually, excuse me. And obviously, that's pretty, pretty large. I mean, 5.5 yards per carry, okay? So, say he gets – Seven seven yards per carry. That means the Lions only creating 1.5 yards or 1.5 yards per carry for him. So he's creating the rest himself. 5.5 yards created per carry. That's insane to me. But and that was just under center formations. Like that's what Stanford does. Obviously, they're one of the old school offenses. But um, 5.5 yards created per carry. Okay, let me just drill that in here. 5.5 yards created per carry. Okay. Not bad. Third most of any college running back ever. You know who that was behind? Mm, you, want, you want to name Herschel Walker? No. Are they recent or are they old? Recent, recent. They're in the NFL right now. Oh. Uh, McCaffrey. Yes. All right. Uh, Gurley? Close, not Gurley, though. Uh, what, what school did he go to? LSU. Oh, uh, Fournette? Yeah. Third behind only them two. Is that not insane? That's impressive. Well, do you have, like, uh, do you know other guys on that list, or do you just know the top three? I only know the top three. All right. I'm sure there's probably other people that are, like, right around. I was just kind of curious to hear what the top ten were, you know? I feel like that can be indicative if, like, the rest of that list is a bunch of NFL players. Oh, yeah. If it it was, like, studs, like – I don't even know who would even play under center like that that much. I don't know. But it could definitely be indicative, yeah. Um, So the 5.5 yards created per carry under center. Yeah. He did that while facing eight-plus defenders in the box. What amount of time, the percentage-wise, compared to the average? The average is 10 to 20%, okay? So how often do you think he faced eight-plus defenders in the box? 40. Not even close. 60. Up. 80, 70 something. 70 percent of the time. 70 percent of the time. That's just insane, especially in the class that he was in. I believe the most, uh, most uh, eight defender, eight plus defenders in the box running back was around maybe 18, maybe 18, 19 percent in just that class, and he faced it 70 percent of the time, and still created the most. I believe it was the most. Oh yeah, it was the most in that class, yards created per carry in that class. Okay. Insane. Obviously, the ACL. It's worries. It's bothersome. It's very scary. But his name was up there. Like, he was a Heisman, close to Heisman Trophy winner in college. Tears his ACL. Comes into the league. I believe he was a fourth-round pick. Was he a fourth-round pick? Either third or fourth. And he was a, you know, like, mid to late-round pick. I remember, I don't, did he, didn't he tear it, like, prior to the draft or something? Yeah, he, te- he tore it his final game. Final regular season game at Stanford. That's a bummer. Very bummer. Um, but, yeah, he – the backfield, obviously, in Washington, like I said, it's in shambles. I can see Bryce Love getting an opportunity, and if he gets that opportunity, he's going to shine. I mean, if he's the same Bryce Love before his ACL tear, I should say. Obviously, yeah. it was electric. You're behind AP. H and AP, okay? Say Geis gets hurt. It's possible. It's realistic, actually. Uh Another rookie running back, Antonio Gibson, who they said they wanted to use as like a receiving back and whatnot. And while Bryce Love kind of profiles like a satellite back, he still – most of his work was strictly carries in college. He didn't perform as a receiver that much. Then Peyton Barber, who the hell's that? J.D. McKissick, again, who the hell's that? If he's given the chance, he's going to shine. If he's the same old Bryce Love, like I said. 
Now, he had another surgery, I believe, before this past year. And all, all it was was to clean up his uh, scar tissue, I believe it was. But he still missed the rest of the season. So kind of questionable, kind of scary to look at. But, I mean, obviously you said modern medicine before, Alex. It's You can trust it a little more than older times, I guess you could say. Yeah, the like, idea. Love come back and blowing up the field. It's definitely in the range of outcomes. Like, it's, it's definitely possible. And having, like I said, the yards created per, per carry in college just – being an overall great athlete, showing his ability to make cuts, yada, 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 all that. He's a great running back. That's all I got to say about him. Like, I like that we have two Redskins players. It's unfortunate, but. That was very weird, too. I didn't expect that. But, yeah. I don't know. But, I mean, I guess it is what it is. I think two of mine came from the NFC East, too. Yeah, I mean, Smith. So, I mean, I guess two of mine did as well. Lost well, Scott. NFC East sleepers over here. It's practically with the got video. a lot of them. Brandon Scott, one of them as well. I was thinking about including Preston Williams in this, but uh, the ACL tear, obviously, like we talked about before, modern medicine, it might not be as impactful on his career, but it just worried me solely due to the fact that he's like a physical receiver, okay? He's not like a Keenan Allen or a Cooper Cup, like underneath like a slot receiver. Like they're both slot receivers. I'm not sure if the ACL tears and, like, coming back from them impact physical players more than the underneath players, I guess you could say. I'm not sure because, like, we've seen Keenan Allen come back from it. He's a great wide receiver. We've seen Cooper Cup come back from it. Literally, a year removed, and he was amazing. I just yeah. – with Preston Williams, it was kind of like a question mark, so I didn't want to include him in here. Even though, as a rookie, he looked great the first couple of weeks. Yeah, I'm a fan of his. I don't really know either whether, like – that's something to be concerned about. Hopefully, Brandon doesn't choose to do him. Who did Brandon? Uh, I guess we'll never mind. Ignore that. Ignore that. <laughs> uh, anyway, I guess that's all I got for the sleepers today. Do you want to do a question, Alex, or do you just want to just sign off? I don't really have a question, so if you have a question, I'll answer it. But I guess, I mean, this isn't really a question. It's kind of like a yes or no question, but I feel like we could have a decent discussion on this. Uh, beef jerky. You loving it or you disliking it? I like it. I wouldn't say I love it because, like, I don't like chewing a ton, and that's often what you have to do with beef jerky. It's like chew the shit out of it. Yeah. But I'm a fan. I love me some beef jerky. I think I spent $20 on two packs last week, and they're gone. They're done. They're done for. You know what happens. Yeah. Love me some jerky. But, uh, yeah. I guess that's all I really got for you then. I all right. So uh, like, comment, share, subscribe. Let us know how you like the sleepers down below. If you have any trades that you made for them or have any questions about trades you want to make for them, leave them down in the comments. We'll get back to you or uh, tweet at me, Brandon, or the other page I suppose you can do. So uh, hey, You're not tweeting at me. Never to be at Alex. You're not even reaching him on social media. You probably won't even see you in the comments either. But I mean, it is what it is. So, uh, deuces, I suppose. Yeah.